But yeah, you got to make the room the room work for yourself by going in the room with, with pure intentions and just knowing that you deserve to be there, you know, no matter where it is. You could be in the White House. Like, if you somehow make it in there, you deserve to be there. You know, God put you there for a reason. Black Monopoly presents Dope Dialogue. The bigger the Warriors got, the bigger my name got because I was affiliated. So like when I'm going to the games, I'm not, you know, I'm on the court. I'm doing, I'm doing all the same stuff that, like, you know. So I would go to, to events in LA, and people would be like, "Oh, that's Chuck from, you know, Golden State." And I was getting introduced like that, and so I know how to like just kind of maximize each situation and keep networking. And so um, that would lead to just different opportunities. You know, I ended up getting a stint with TMZ Sports. Um, shout out to Van Lathan um, and Michael Babcock and Harvey and Evan and everybody over there. So I was at the TMZ thing and I was just stacking from there, meeting people, you know, doing cool stories, fun stories. Um, you know, I went from there to, uh, you know, like like these startup companies would start reaching out to me, just wanting me to do like quick video hits or like be like a brand ambassador you know, giving you four or 5,000 a month just to do stuff like that, you know? So things would just start happening like that, you know? But I know how to get in the room and make the room work for me, you know what I mean? And I think that's how I kind of like transitioned. Um, and then once I, I left uh, Golden State, um, I had like a little down period. And then um, the Howard Network, um, a mentor of mine, had a connection with uh, LeBron and Mav, Maverick Carter. Um, um, my guy, he works at ESPN, he, uh, Marcus Matthews, he went to uh, Howard, you know, he's been working at ESPN for years. So he's, I mean, uninterrupted, is looking for, you know, a podcast producer. So he connected me to this guy named Andrew Hawkins, uh, who just won an Oscar um, for um, Hair Love, and he's just won an Emmy, like, Hawk is the man. But I had already knew Hawk, because when I was at TMZ, I did a couple stories with Hawk. So, like, you know, I knew him a little bit, you know, so he remembered me, and then, um, there was this guy named uh, Tunde, um, TD we call him, and they were kind of like doing the hiring process. So I went up to Uninterrupted, met with them, you know, at, uh, at, at Brian and Mav's office. And then uh, next thing I know, they gave me the gig. And so I got into the fold with them on the podcast producing side. Um, and then I started bringing in some people like to kind of come on the shows. And Hawk was like, wait a minute, like you should probably be on the athlete relations team because I have a lot of relationships. So they moved me from the podcast team. I kind of was doing both, really. Like, they still had me doing podcasting, but they moved me to what they call the AR team, um, you know, with Jimmy Spencer and the guys. So I was working with them, uh, booking uh, athletes and bringing them in and getting them on platform for different things that we were doing, uh, like the shop on HBO, you know, Chasing Dough, you know, uh, all the dope stuff that they're doing over there. Uh, so, you know, that was a great experience, you know. So, uh, you know, I did that, and then... Um, I ended up launching my uh, my management company, and that's how I kind of transitioned to where I'm at now. Got you. So before we touch on the management company, what's I'm pretty sure there's like a lot of work and factors to it, but what's one gem you could drop about making the room work for you? Um, being strategic about the rooms that you go into, you know, you got to get to that point early um, in life, early in your career. You have to know that like, uh, no matter where you are at in your career, what position that you think you're at, you know, like people still have to respect you as a person. You know, like a lot of people are intimidated by the room. I'm never intimidated by anybody. You know, I think I'm the, the greatest person to ever live. You know what I mean? So like your confidence has to be like on that peak, like because without confidence, like you're nothing. You're, you'll be, you'll shelter your own mind. So that's how you make the room work for yourself. You have to know you deserve to be in that room. Um, and like I said, one thing I didn't like about LA when I first moved here was that I would be at these industry mixers or whatever and people would walk up to me and they would go, what do you do? And like, I hate that because it's like, one, I have a name, two, hello, you know, good evening, you know what I'm saying? Like, and three, it's like, does that even matter? Like, I'm in the same space as you, you know, we can get to that, like, but let's have normal human interaction and conversations first, you know what I mean? Um, and then, then I'll tell you all the cool stuff that I'm doing, and then if it makes sense, then we can do some business, you know what I mean? But I want people to know who I am as a person first because... Like, if we're gonna be, you know, doing business together, like, it's very important that you know my character and, like, where I come from and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, you gotta make the room, the room work for yourself by going in the room with, with pure intentions and just knowing that you deserve to be there, you know, no matter where it is. You could be in the White House. Like, if you somehow make it in there, you deserve to be there. You know, God put you there for a reason. So once you look at the game like that, the game slows down for you. 
and you just execute whatever vision you're trying to do.